Greetings, my name is Ryan Nicks. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Services. I'm joined here today by Paul from Red Hat. Paul, give us a shout out on your role and say hi. Yeah, I'm Paul Tchaikovsky. I'm a Managed OpenShift Black Belt at Red Hat. Uh, and we focus on some of our cloud services. Uh, specifically here, we're talking about Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or ROSA. So ROSA is the managed version of OpenShift. It is OpenShift that customers uh, are investing in and love, but there is an SRE team that is managing that, reducing the undifferentiated heavy lifting. Paul, okay. today I have a interesting challenge for you, and it's okay. not ROSA specific. It, okay. it, it applies to managed as well as self-managed OpenShift. And, and that is logging. Uh, what are the different kinds of logs? How can we get that logging environment up and running? What are the different options available to customers? And, and maybe we can flesh some things out here. Now, OpenShift, I, I think, makes sense to have a look at what logs are available that could be exposed. Yeah. So OpenShift generates uh, three types of logs. And those are audits, infrastructure, and application. So audit, um, any action that is being done by anybody with privileges, that would be in the case of ROSA, the customer themselves, but it would also encapsulate SRE team members doing management on, on the customer's behalf? Exactly, that's correct. Uh, infrastructure is any sort of logging that pertains to the cluster itself as it scales, health of the operators, those sort of functions. Yep, that's right. Uh, app, I'm assuming the actual application workloads. Right, so as you start running applications in the cluster, it will write those application logs so that your app developers can see their logs when they want to troubleshoot issues or, you know. That, that's a bit more conscious. That is the app developer would need to put something into the app to, say, generate logging, and if that's there, it would collect that? Or, yeah, or is so it as long as the application is logging to standard out, it will get captured by the OpenShift logging system. Okay, all right, cool. Um, does Prometheus, Grafana, those sort of things overlap the app log or do they complement that app log? They, um, they complement it. So Prometheus and Grafana are for the metrics side of things, whereas the logging system is for the like, actual logs and you know, events. Okay, right, yep. cool. The um, reason I ask is a lot of customers have a bit of a misconception that I could replace the one with the other and, and really it's not the no, case. So you, you need both. Yeah, exactly. So once you have logging enabled, OpenShift mm -hmm. collects these logs. Historically, OpenShift would have a built-in logging and monitoring environment that That's allowed right. you to visualize the logs, it allowed you to do analytics on that. Mm -hmm. There was some elastic search under the hood, there was some Kibana under the hood. That's that's still there in a modern yeah, day context. That, that's still there. So by default when you spin up a cluster, the the logs exist, but like they're not in a viewable format. You can't actually get to them unless you're logging into the main machines directly, which you shouldn't be doing. So the first thing you do is you use the uh, OpenShift logging operator. So let me draw that up. Uh, we'll just do OLO for short. Uh, and that exposes uh, two, uh, two new resources, cluster logging, let's pretend I can spell correctly, and uh, cluster log forwarding. We'll just do it in for short. So, so cluster logging will then spin up a Elasticsearch cluster. Uh, so Elasticsearch Kibana. It can also spin up a Loki cluster, which is uh, So we've got Loki. Elasticsearch, we've got uh, Kibana, mm -hmm. and, and Loki or Loki? Uh, and or Loki. So you can do both. Usually you make a choice between one or the other. So Elastic is kind of the... I won't quite say legacy, but that's been there for quite some time. Yeah, and, and the and whole that's, thing that's a search filtering exactly. mechanism right. uh, where you can really define what logs are interesting to me, uh, control who can right. access them to some degree. Right. Kibana, really the visualization exactly, layer of that. Right. Uh, Loki's a little bit different, and we'll come back to Loki, I mm -hmm. think, in a second because there's a lot of fun with Loki in right. in modern day logging. Uh, I 
historically didn't always see customers enable the Elasticsearch, Kibana, Fluent, D type logging mm -hmm. inside OpenShift. Many OpenShift 3 customers would take a external approach that have their own Elasticsearch environment outside of OpenShift. It's, it's the same building blocks, just external to the yep. cluster. And in that case, I think the log forwarding is coming in forwarding to those right. external so resources. In any case, you actually use the cluster log forwarding to set up your forwarding to either internal. the elastic that you've created internally or to an elastic you have off board. So I always say to customers when I'm talking to them, whatever logging stack you currently use for the rest of your infrastructure, you can use that with OpenShift as well. So don't just like adopt what OpenShift's default is. Bring, bring what you do and we'll have a way to integrate with that. And usually... Find, find what's most meaningful exactly, to your business. Exactly. And usually that integration yeah. happens at the cluster log forwarding. The other thing is you mentioned, uh, you know, bringing your own elastic search. You can also bring in, say, Datadog or Splunk or third Curator. Third parties, yes. Third parties, right? And a lot of those are not through the cluster log forwarding, but are done by an operator that's maintained by that third party. So Datadog has an operator, Splunk has an operator, and I think IBM has an operator for Curator. And so you would bypass cluster log forwarding and you would deploy the operator through Operator Hub and get your logs that way. So, I mean, there's a lot of third-party options here. So I've, I've listed some of the ones that you've mentioned, Datadog, Splunk uh, uh, has been around for a, a very long time, very popular likewise, Qradar. Uh, IBM's Instana is a uh, growing product where there is a lot of analytics, AI yep. backing that up. So it's not just a seam product as we right. see with some of the others. There, there's a lot more capability there. And, and I think generally in the third-party space, there is the capability to filter the logs, there's the ability to analyze those logs, visualize them, and, and, and what we're seeing in that third party space is a growing trend of a, an analytics AI platform to get better intelligence out of the logs mm -hmm. than, than what we had previously. Uh, so I, I see a lot of value in this, and again, that, that's that log forwarding from the OpenShift log uh, operator to that third party, so an endpoint for uh, the, the third party platform. That said, uh, being on AWS, a, a lot of customers that I work with that are bringing OpenShift to AWS are also taking advantage of AWS for their logging environments, not That's just right. OpenShift in, in a more general sense. Yep. So something like AWS, CloudWatch. Yep, that's right. Uh, so, so log forwarding from your, your logging environment into CloudWatch and then from within AWS, uh, you could add in something like uh, SageMaker to add in that, right. that AI analytics of yep. the data or you could have something like um, Athena or you could have something like uh, quick site to actually visualize that. But either which way, here you're gonna have to decide on, on which AWS building blocks do you wanna to aggregate together to meet your requirements right. where with a third party you're potentially uh, paying for a build solution. You know, that, yep. that buy versus build mm -hmm. uh, mentality. What are we missing? So what we're missing is how we actually get from OpenShift to CloudWatch. So you have the cluster log forwarding, right? And that basically lets you define a set of pipelines. So you define an input, which is one or more of these, and then you define an output, which could be CloudWatch, or it could be any of these up here. Uh, and then you basically set up a pipeline that says this input goes to this output. Okay, and, and you can define multiple. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so if you had a requirement to do you know, whatever, uh, a larger business use case where my marketing team wanted analytics, but mm -hmm. my uh, infrastructure monitoring team has in really invested in something like Curator or Splunk, right. you, can, you can do a pipeline to each of those. Yeah, so a good example is a lot of the times security teams are using Splunk to do their security audits, right? To look for like intrusions and stuff like that. So you can say, okay, send my audit logs to Splunk via Syslog. You can, uh, your application uh, developers, 
they may want to use the in-cluster Elasticsearch or Kibana just to keep everything in the OpenShift cluster and within the OpenShift authentication. For example, if you push your application logs to Elasticsearch, and then as a developer, you log into a, a Kibana, you'll, you'll only see the applications that are in your namespaces. So there's some security put in there so that like teams can't see each other's logs and stuff like that, which is yeah. often very important when you have a separation of duties and you have multi-tenant multi clusters. You need to be able to separate out who has permission to access what. And that's one of the things OpenShift does is it brings that multi-tenancy of OpenShift and it brings it into the other things that OpenShift includes, like the Elasticsearch and Kibana stack. I want to throw a spanner in the works. Okay, so of course. Logging, we're talking applications that scale here, logging, auditing, it's, it's a tremendous amount of data. Mm -hmm. That adds an overhead in terms of compute and storage. That's right. So I want to zoom in on, on two things here. You know, if I'm pushing log information out to AWS CloudWatch, that scales very effectively mm -hmm. for me. It manages the compute for the managed service. Talk to me about Loki. Loki does something fun as well. Yeah, so Loki, uh, it runs in the cluster, but the actual storage for the logs itself is in S3. And that means you get, you know, Amazon's unlimited as long as you have a credit card on file uh, storage of your, your data. And it dynamically scales in terms of performance as exactly. well. Once it's in S3, you can also then, you know, take advantage of any number of other applications on AWS for what you want to do with that data. Yep. So there's a lot of things uh, around that. I think in, in, in summation, it, it's really Customers have choice. You, you mm -hmm. decide what is most meaningful to your business, whether that's to take advantage of something built in because you don't already have mm -hmm. a, a, a logging investment, or if you have an existing logging investment that you're using in a hybrid context or an existing infrastructure space, you know, you can use that third party. Yep. Or if you're actually moving directly into the cloud, you can take advantage of those or combinations of the above. And, and OpenShift is, is really that flexible. Rosa OCP, for a little while, Rosa had a separate operator to facilitate things like CloudWatch. Very recently, there's been an update to the logging operator for OpenShift in general. That's right. And am I correct in saying that OpenShift now directly supports CloudWatch without an additional operator? It's the standard logging operator. That's correct. The, the standard cluster log forwarding operator fully supports CloudWatch now. And that's and, as of 4.11? Uh, that's as... Uh, a very specific version of the cluster logging stack, which you asked me the, the one question I don't know the answer to. Okay, so I think it is. But I, think, as, for, I think it's so. Like four for eleven for sure has it. Um, I think it'll probably get backported to four ten as well, um, but I don't know how far back it will get backported. But that means that the uh, cluster logging add-on is no longer necessary, uh, and so it's. It's not exactly deprecated yet, but it's the requirement for it is is disappeared. So, uh, long and short of it, is the approach for all of these is is consistent whether you're using managed OpenShift or self-managed OpenShift. Absolutely. You've got the same options. The same options. Uh, I think there's a couple of things that we haven't mentioned, but I think we've got the, the bulk of what we're seeing across enterprise customers. Here. Yeah. You know, I think the one thing we didn't mention is if you are logging to CloudWatch or if you're logging to Loki back into S3, there is then obviously the need to get authentication into the cluster mm -hmm. to have permission to do that. And you can do that both via doing user IM and injecting the, the, the service key credentials, or you can use STS uh, and so use pod identity. Either making use of keys, which I wouldn't recommend, exactly. or alternatively using an STS implementation. And, and that STS is going to give you least privilege exactly. as well as uh, temporary credentials, which I, I think from a security perspective are, are both super attractive. Uh, Paul, as always, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, of it's course. a pleasure having you here. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us.